Hello, and welcome to Eastgate Community Church. We are so glad you've joined us to listen to this message from our weekend encounter. We pray you are encouraged by what you are about to hear. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you will make something beautiful out of each and every one of us. Well, I want to welcome you this morning. You've walked in a little bit late. Welcome to Eastgate. Well, this morning, you are in for a super special treat. Um, we're going to have Christine come up here in just a moment, but um, and she'll share a little bit on Warrior Class. I just brought it up here. I know you have yours, but um, Christine. <laughs> Christine is a personal friend of ours, and she's a mentor in my life. So I'm so, so blessed to have her here with us. Um, she carries so much wisdom. Like when I think about you, Christine, I just carry, I think wisdom, 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 <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> so much insight for the body of Christ. Um, and I just don't even really know where to go with that other than I am ready to receive some of that amazing wisdom. You know, you spoke briefly on the fire, not the, not the good fire, but the, the trials, right? The fiery trials, but also uh, the process, or as the British or the Aussies would say, the process. <laughs> we don't really like the process so much. Christine loves the process. <laughs> That's like her favorite place. <laughs> or one of her favorite things to talk about anyways, because, you know, you don't grow and you don't develop into the person that you are until you've walked through the process. So uh, that's really where the treasures are found. That's where the treasures are found. So Christine, come on up. We will let's welcome Christine as she comes up here. <laughs> Good morning. So as we were in worship, God gave me a different kind of picture for the fire. So Lana talked last night about the fire. That's the trials of fire. But what he showed me was I was up on a mountain, and this was before they started talking about climbing up the mountain. Just <laughs> put that out there. Um, so I was on a mountain, and I looked over the mountain, and I saw this forest. And the forest wasn't very bright. It was, it was kind of a dark forest. And the Lord said, you know, my fire in the burning bush did not burn the bush. He has the ability to give us a fire in our lives that doesn't burn what's eternal. And that fire is called passion. And we're going to talk about passion today. So it worked out well that he give you, you know, I love God. I mean, you know, have you, I mean, really, really. So Lana last night was talking, you know, it was, it was just amazing because I was just loving what God is doing through, um, you know, one of the things that's fun about being a speaker is that you have multiple speakers come to one event and they all come prepared and they all dovetail off of each other so well. And so it's just God that does that. You know, the music, about the mountain, having the vision. I mean, you know, God is just good. And, and y'all, we need to get excited about being with God. I mean, it's an amazing, amazing place to be. You know, the Wonder Woman motif that we talked about last night, you know, I love, I loved Wonder Woman because when I was younger, Wonder Woman was on TV. And of the five channels that we had to watch, I know I'm dating myself. Yes, what, that was one of my shows that I loved to watch. And I loved Wonder Woman because she was able to stand in this place of, first of all, she had a code of honor. And I loved that about her. She had an internal code of honor that directed her path. But she was this woman who was like, you know, able to like catch the bad guys and just look amazing doing it, right? You know? <laughs> That's not been my my testimony in my life. So um, anyway, don't always look amazing doing it, but that's okay because God loves me. But anyway, so I didn't feel like I was going to be talking about Wonder Woman because God had that covered. And then I started thinking also about, well, what else is being a woman of wonder like? You know, and I thought about God himself, the God of wonder, you know, the God of majesty, just being overwhelmed by God. And, of course, I wanted to stay there, but God said, hey, I'm taking you over here. I said, okay, let's go. So what he took me to, actually, was another type of wonder. And that wonder is the wonder that pulls our curiosity into a place of exploration. It pulls our passion um, out of us and causes us to really seek after the heart of God. It's a wonder that, that creates a passion, that opens heavens, that... Um, 
creates divine assignments, and it also is something that will accelerate our maturing process in our growth. So as we, as, as I was praying about that, you know, the funny thing about every time I, t I come and talk to Eastgate, God brings David into my, you know, my, my preparation. And so uh, you have to understand that he doesn't come into my preparation for most things. So uh, he's, a, he's a great study, and I love what God always reveals, but, um, but I think David is an inheritance for you guys. And I really would encourage you to really pursue what David, you know, all the stuff that God did in David's life. There's so many different ways to look at it. And I love coming because God lets me unpack something different. So today we're going to use David, even though he's a guy, I know. But even though he's a guy, we're going to use David as kind of a picture for us. And what, what was so amazing about David is that he, he actually was able to have so much passion. What was he known as? A man after Right. Well, that's passion. He was able to have so much passion in his heart for God that he pulled a relationship that was meant a thousand years in the future with God into his today. So David's passion pulled his future into his today. So if I were to title this talk, I would say passion pulls your future into your today. So when we think about David, I'm a question asker. I love to ask questions. And God's okay with that because my questions aren't questioning why. It's not like a victim question where I'm like, oh God, why are you doing this to me? It's questions that are exploration questions. So I started asking questions. So what was different about David, right? That allowed him to live as prophet, priest, and king. What allowed him to live in what was for a future time? And what can we take from his example to have in our lives today? So David's passion pulled his future into his today. That means he was a foreshadowing of Christ. He walked in a relationship with God, a direct connection with God that was amazing. See, that relationship was not meant until after Christ came on the earth, died, and was resurrected for our sons. Do you get what we're saying? A thousand years before, that was supposed to be okay. David pulled it in because he was so passionate. In that day, you know, only prophets heard from God, prophets, priests, and they would go to the people and they would say, this is what God said. And they would go to the king and they would say, this is what God's saying. No one else heard directly. Very few. You can read the Bible. I would suggest you do that. You can read the Bible and you can see it. See, so, so the first thing about David that, that brought his, um, that was different was that he heard directly from God. He had a personal relationship with the Lord. <clears throat> and so I said, okay, well, why were people not able to hear from God? Okay, yeah, you're going to say, well, Adam and, De Adam and Eve came, you know, the fall. You can give me that whole theological argument. And I can say, you're right. But as I was reading in Exodus 20, 18 through 21, if you'd like to turn there, I found something really interesting because the Israelites had an opportunity to connect with God. He gave them a chance to have that relationship with him. So in Exodus 20 and 18, it says, Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Can't you see them? You speak with us. God's going to kill us. You know. So they're, they're afraid, fear fear. So, and Moses said to the people, do not fear. God has come to test you and that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near to the thick darkness, darkness where God was. So the thing is, is that God allowed the mountain to shake. He allowed it to tremble. He allowed the thunders and the lightnings because he is a majestic God. He is a powerful God. And he did that because he wanted the people to understand this wasn't just, a, oh, I'm going to walk this up and talk to God. Hey, how you doing? Yo, yo. 
You know, it's not, a, it's not that kind of a relationship. He wanted them to be consecrated. He wanted them to be sin-free. He wanted them to be ready to meet their creator face-to-face. And sometimes in our quest for relationship, we forget the majesty part. He is a majestic God. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, amazing, a God of wonder. And what's so wonderful about him is he wants to be close to us. So he creates an opportunity for connection. And he did that with the Israelites, but they said, no, that's scary, right? Okay, church. Pastor, tell us what we need to know. Prophet, give us the word from God. Okay, God created the fivefold ministry for a purpose. He set it up as part of his church. Yes, it is part of his church, and that is supposed to happen. But it's not supposed to replace our relationship with God. The word is a catalyst for an opportunity for you to go to God and say, God, what are you talking about with this? Just like Lana talked about last night, she may not understand the symbolism, and God does that on purpose. Because he wants to walk with us in relationship through that. He wants to take us on a journey. The journey. <laughs> that song was so perfect. I just wish I could, like, you know, have all the words in front of me. But he wants to take us on a journey with him to unpack, to understand, to get greater revelation, to deepen. And, guys, it is all about our own growth. You know, he doesn't need it, except that he wants it. He wants that for us. So, so we have, you know, we have this mindset sometimes where we abdicate our relationship with God. And when we do that, what happens is we, we lose the chance to have a conversation with God directly. We, um, we transfer our opportunity for a relationship to someone else. We create an imbalance and an immaturity in the body of Christ because we aren't stepping into a place of our own growth. And guys, God is about all of us doing it. You know, when we talk about unity, again, Lana last night talking about, I was just so excited. I was like, yes, yes, (laughs) yes, that too. You know, when we create a whole place of unity, that means we come together in the fullness of who we are in that place. We come together together. Her skills, my skills, your skills, your skills, your skills. Everyone's skills come together the way God's wired us, and we're meant to work together as a body. We're not supposed to have one person carry the load. It is about all of us working together. And when you talk about a movement in the body of Christ right now, that's what it is, the body of Christ. That's what we're doing. It's not about the superstars anymore. They were right for a season but we're not in that season anymore. So we give up our opportunity to have the direct connection with God that he intended, and this establishes a separation that continues until our heart passion rises up and we seek him out to develop a personal relationship with him until we become women of wonder. That's what reconnects us. The, the idea of a woman of wonder focusing her passions and building relationship with God is what we're talking about. But more on that later. We're going to go to David now. So the first thing David did was he carried God's, or, you know, he, he had that direct relationship with God. And then the second thing he did was he carried the presence of God with him. Right? Think about the ark. Right? He carried the ark with him. But you have to understand, the king before him, Saul, got his kingship removed for trying to be a priest. His kingship was removed because he stepped in to a place where his army was was battling the Philistines. Philistines, sorry. Palestine, Palestine, it's a Texas thing. Anyway, the Philistines. And it it was one of those things where he was waiting for Samuel, and Samuel was late. The people were anxious, so he took it upon himself to step into the idea of priest. He lost his throne. So what was different about David and Saul that allowed David to 
in a few scenes later where the linen ephod dance and praise the king, the priestly garment, and carry the Ark of the Presence in, I would submit to you that it was passion. And then what about in um, 1 Samuel 21, 1 through 6, where David is there with his, gr- his troops, and he goes to Nob, and he, he does ask permission to, of the priest, but the, the guys are hungry. And he says, can we have the holy bread of the temple so I can feed my troops? Yeah, I mean, it was untouchable. You have to understand, it was consecrated as to, uh, to the Lord. But the priest said yes, and David got the bread and was able to hand it out. I think that's a picture of the church. We're consecrated. He was only able to hand it out to his men because they were consecrated. They were pure. Well, in Christ... We're pure. So we come to gatherings like this where we hand out the bread and we encourage and we strengthen so that we can go into the battleground. But David was able to do that. Again, pulling what was meant a thousand plus years in the future into his today. So one of the other things that David did was he set a foundation for the future. And Lana talked a little bit about this last night too. But basically, David saw the blueprints from heaven for the temple, the temple of God that was going to be built, and he prepared the way. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Chronicles 22, because we're going to stay in this passage for a little bit. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I will spot through some of it, um, just because it's long. But it's uh, 1 Chronicles 22. So basically, David's toward the end of his life. He knows Solomon's going to be king. And David has had on his heart forever to see the dwelling place of the Lord among the people. And I think there's something just in that alone. The idea of God's presence among the people. David was so passionate about that. He wanted to build the temple and bring God into the midst of the city. So he's, he's collecting all these things. He's got... Um, I'm going to paraphrase, he's got iron and nails and wood, and he's got the artisans that he's bringing forward. And then we move to verse 5, and it says, David says, Solomon, my son is young and inexperienced, and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparation for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. So David resourced the future generation. Next, he commissions and prophesies over his son in verse 6. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of of the Lord my God. He wanted to do that. That was his vision all along. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, you have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest and I will give him rest from all of his enemies all around. His name shall be Solomon for I will give him peace and quietness to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you. May you prosper and build a house to the Lord your God, as he has said to you. Only may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding and give you charge concerning Israel that you may keep the law of the Lord your God. I wonder if Solomon was thinking about this prophetic word when he stepped into being king. Because what delighted God's heart more than anything about what Solomon asked for was that he asked for wisdom. And then God gave him the abundance of everything else he could have asked for. David planted the seed through God's word through him to his son and commissioning his son. The other thing is that David battled and took the territory. He was the one who who created the space. He moved into the territory and he took that ground and he held that ground so that his son could be a man of peace, meaning that the battle was over. 
And we need to remember that part of what we do in our lives is we step into a territory and we take it and we hold that ground because we are preparing that place for the next generation to not have to battle in that ground. They can be in rest and they can build on what we've already done. You know, when we talk about the future generations rising up, it's a both and. You know, we, are, we have a part of that. We have a part of that. So what are you contending for now that future generations can step into? And what ground are you taking so that they can start from that point? So then it goes on and um, in 13, and it talks about, um, it talks about, you know, again, the, the measure of things that David is preparing, the abundance that he's giving to, uh, toward the temple, the resources, the bronze, the iron, um, the workmen, the gold and silver, you know, bronze and iron. There is no limit. I mean, it was a lot of stuff, you know, to build this temple. So David allowed his life and all that he accomplished to be a launching point for others. And we get that opportunity, we get that privilege as well. When we take ground and we take territory, there are things we learn. There are things we amass, resources that we, we pull in to our understanding, and they're meant to be shared. Meant to be shared. We need to remember that what we do as women of wonder creates a foundation for others we'll build on now and in the future. So in our passion to pursue God, God pulls together what's needed for the next generation. Our lack of passion creates a vacuum or a void that the future generation has to fill in first before they can build. So in 17, David also commanded all the leaders of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? And has he not given you rest on every side? For he has given the inhabitants of the land into my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Therefore arise and build a sanctuary of the Lord um, God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy articles of God into the house that is to be built for the name of the Lord. So what did David do? He created a unifying vision. He created something that all the people could get behind in their support of Solomon as king, but also a, a purpose that they were all going toward. And sometimes our people perish for lack of vision, right? So part of what we do as we take ground, as we, as we establish territory, as we raise up future generations, as we sow into them, as we resource them, as we give them all that we have, because we don't need it when we go to heaven. <laughs> Plus, we need to make room for more that God's going to put into us. Yeah? The more we give away, the more room we have to receive, more ground we can take. Yeah? It, kind of cool kingdom principle. So, so he creates this unifying vision, and through the unified purpose, they were able to fulfill it. The temple was magnificent. It was incredible. And the presence of God was able to dwell among the people. You know, David fulfilled his passion. His passion was a place where he so just stayed in that place where he wanted to see God. He just so wanted to be in God's presence. He so wanted to connect with God. And he knew how amazing it was. And because of that, he wanted all, all the people to have that too. So not only did he try to bring through his passion, he didn't try, God, God allowed it. But through his passion, a thousand years into the future, he brought this into his today and he created a space for the people to experience it as well. That's pretty cool, guys. So by being a foreshadow or a picture of Christ, he was able to merge prophet, priest, and king into his today, thousands of years before, a thousand years plus before. And then, so what, what wonders did David experience as a man of passion and wonder? And, and you get to share these two. <clears throat> he partnered with the vision. He resourced the vision. He commissioned the vision. He battled to take and hold the territory so the vision was possible. He was a launching point and a foundation for the vision. 
and he casts a unifying vision and support for momentum for the completion of the vision. Let me read those again, because y'all are receiving. Okay. He partnered with the vision. He resourced the vision. He commissioned the vision. He battled and to take the territory and hold the territory so the vision was possible. He became a launching point or a foundation for the vision, and he cast a unifying vision to support the momentum of seeing it come to pass. He created a picture of what life as a believer in Christ is like. Now, that seems like a lot of big things, but David didn't set off, you know, set out to say, I'm going to do this. <laughs> he just was playing his, you know, instruments in the field, worshiping God. And then God took him step by step by step. God took him step by step. David chose to step into that opportunity, but God created them for him. So, as we move from David to us, let's talk about passion. You know, passion is our key to being women of wonder. Nothing we do matters if we do it without passion. So passion connects or creates connection with God. You know, it develops a perspective of seeing through God's eyes. Passion cracks open the doors to, for majesty, um, for the majesty of God. It creates a testimony for others as we share and as we receive and encourage and exhort each other. And passion also causes acceleration to bring your future into today. So let's look at passion creating a connection with God. Let's talk about what is passion. What is it? Well, it's a resolve. It's, it's uh, something that connects us to what matters. It helps us hold on and stay focused. It serves to reframe our minds and turn them the right direction. And it helps us relocate our direction and our purpose. People with resolve will stand. You may get knocked down, but if you have resolve, you will stand back up. And you will set your face as flint and go for what, what God has for you. People who have passion and the way it creates connection with God is that we're resilient. You know, no matter the situation, passion connects us back to our destiny and our purpose. It allows us to step into that place where we can get up and keep going no matter what. Because just like Lana talked about in that dark night of the soul that she had, she had a promise from God, and she declared and decreed and continued to speak it out. That allowed her to be resilient. It's also refining. Passion takes us to that place, that fiery bush that I talked about, that flame. Passion is a burning flame within us, and it is a refining fire within us. So yes, there are things that we have in us that should not necessarily go forward into the next season. God will use that passion to help that burn up. And it's the passion that helps us have the courage to look at it and to say, I don't want that. I don't need that. That's not who I am. God says this about me and I'm going to step into that. So it, it allows us to be refined. It also, and this is one of the harder things, it allows us to be revealed. You know, our passion puts us in a place where we get to that point where we say, you know what? I don't care what's there. I just want it to be all yours. You know, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be open. God, you just come in all my doors are open to you. I'm not hiding anything. Come in. Help me. Strengthen me. Take me where I need to go. Burn up the dross. Let me have that refiner's fire. And someone sent out a picture on Facebook the other day that um, it's a picture of these two hands that are just dirty. I mean, they're just like like black, dirty, you know, with dirt all over them. But inside of them, there's this perfectly pure heart of gold. And to me, that's a picture of what God's doing with us. He's taking us into that refining fire, you know. And he's allowing our, our, our hearts to be revealed because he's always about our best. 
You know, we fear letting God see this about us because he's not going to like it. He knows about it anyway. And he's waiting for us to make the choice to say, yeah, I'm ready to release it. I give it to you. It's all yours. And the last thing passion does to create a connection with God is it allows us to be reconciled to him because we will have thoughts that aren't the greatest. You know, in the process of growing, in the process of changing and maturing, there are things that will sometimes take us away from the Lord. We'll turn when he's over here. We'll go this way. But because passion reconnects us to God, God takes us into that place of being able to be reconciled in relationship with him. You know, God chose to see David not by his mistakes. And he made a few. God could have easily labeled him a man after Bathsheba. <laughs> you know, he could have labeled him, um, you know, a myriad of things. Because David was so passionate that sometimes his passion ran away with him. You know, and he kind of got himself into some, some kind of difficult positions because of it. But... That's okay. We're going to make mistakes. You know, he wasn't trying to be rebellious. Well, maybe with Bathsheba he was. But for the most part, when we make mistakes, we're not trying to be rebellious. We're not trying to push God away. We're just so passionate about what we're doing that sometimes we miss step. You know, there's permission for that. There's grace for that. There's reconciliation after that. It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. And honestly, if you're not making mistakes, I might submit that you may not be stretching yourself enough. Because we'll probably fail at a few things in our own minds. But if you're learning from it, is it really a failure? Just saying. So God's attracted to our passion. You know, he... he wants to align us with his heart. That's really what he wants to do. And so, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes when we get to the place where we are trying to, where we're trying to go after God with 100%, um, you know, sometimes what we do is, is we, we think, well, I didn't have enough quiet time today. You know, I should have had more. And there is a place for quiet time where, you know, Jesus modeled that. He pulled himself away. But that's not the only place where we meet God. You know, and, and the place where we're talking about praying without ceasing. You know, I was, I was always fascinated by that. What is praying without ceasing? What does that look like? You know, because I'm like thinking prayer, you know. And, and like I remember this skit where someone talks about, God, we roll over and, you know, and like they're physically doing all these things, you know. And so it's like this, this whole funny skit. But I just had this weird idea of what praying without ceasing looked like until God said, it's just having conversations with me. It's just talking to me throughout the day. It's just actually having one part of your heart always open to what I want to say. And he's funny. I mean, he is, he's got, I mean, we got a sense of humor from him. He's funny. So, I mean, there are times when he will say a one-liner and I will burst out laughing. Because he's just funny. And, you know, I mean, and it may be something that's kind of a little bit at the expense of me because he may be so like, so how's that working for you? Yeah. Not too well. <laughs> You're right. I need to change my thoughts on that. So, um, so anyway, you know, it's really just about praying without ceasing. It's really just conversation. It's talking with God. It's, it's remembering that he is here for us. He wants to walk with us. He's about relationship. Let's not compartmentalize him into one place. And I can promise you this, if you say yes to him, he will blow that box out of your water. Every single time, because we keep putting him in boxes, and he keeps blowing them up. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for doing that, because we don't want to be in a box. So passion creates connection for God. It also cracks open the door for the majesty of God to come through. So we think about worship time, which has been just amazing. Thank you. Um, we think about worship time. What makes one worship time different than another? Usually, usually it's the hunger of the people who are worshiping. 
Because our passion attracts God. Our passion brings us into a place of pulling him into our moment with us. Yes, he's omnipresent. But we can encounter him in the manifest presence, the Shekinah glory that comes in those moments because we are so hungry. And God's attracted to that. He's attracted to our hunger. You know, he wants to align us with his heart. He wants to, do y'all know what alignment means? Being fully present and fully open to God. I mean, that's what he wants to do in our hearts. When we look at Revelation 3.20, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. When we choose to open our hearts to Jesus, what we do is we are met with an abundance of who he is. And guys, it's our door that needs to be opened. His are wide open. Yeah, you, know, you think about that hotel room with the connecting rooms, right? So you've got one door that's open and the other door is cracked open. Yeah, God, I love you. You're in my life. I check that box, I'm going to heaven. You know, I've got that crack open, but God, uh, Jesus, just knock, 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 knock. Hey, <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Want to build a snowman? No, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, he's there. He's saying he's inviting us all the time. So when the doors of our heart are open to the open doors of his heart, our lives are transformed into women of wonder. Because he can't help but be abundant. He can't help but be glorious. He can't help but share his wonders with us. He is a God of wonder. He's amazing. Passion is the key that opens those doors to him. It is the key that opens your door that goes from this to this. God limits himself to free will. He allows us the choice. In his grace and mercy, he allows us permission. And by saying yes, we give permission to heavenly momentum in our lives. Get ready. You say yes, it's coming. So let me give you a little, a little picture of the story of my first charismatic conference. <laughs> I came to, uh, to the spirit-filled life from a different background. And so I knew that there were going to be things at this conference that I'd been invited to that were going to be very different than what I had experienced in my past. And so I thought, you know, there may be some things that are a little weird to me. And so I just, I just thought about that, and that could have held me back because it's kind of a little fear thing, you know, don't know what to expect and all that. But I was so hungry for God. I was so passionate. I was in that place where he had sparked something in my life. And I didn't care anymore about what was, you know, uncomfortable for me. I just wanted to be in a place where I could so go after him. And I thought that maybe there was something there that I could, I could tap into. So I said, okay, God, I'm saying yes to this. I'm saying yes. I just ask you to give me the wisdom to discern what's of you and what is not. It was a simple request, and he honored that. And there were some weird things to me at that conference, but I didn't care because he encountered me in a way that I had never encountered his presence. I mean, the things that he was releasing in my heart that day and, and through those days were amazing, and I saw my first miracle there. I saw someone's fillings turn from black to gold in front of my eyes. Yeah, hard to deny it, right? <laughs> it happened right in front of my eyes. You know, so I saw this miracle happen, which of course, no one can take that away. It's a miracle. You know, so do I have some funny stories? Yeah, there were some funny stories from that conference. But, you know, we have to, we have to be willing to go out of our comfort zone and out of our box. You know, passion takes us into this place of being uncomfortable because God wants to stretch us. He wants to build our capacity for him. He wants to pour so much into us. You know, and it's just like Jesus said, I want to speak to you of heavenly things, but I can't because all you, you, know, you don't even understand the earthly things yet. 
He has so much to share with us. He has so much to give us, so much abundance. And passion is the key to seeing that happen. So even if it makes me uncomfortable, even if it's unpredictable, even if it means I'm out of my element, even if it means that I'm stretched to my fullest potential, my answer is always yes. When I said yes back then, I didn't know it, but when I said yes back then, what I said yes to was a life of passion. So after, in, in that time when I said yes, God took me into a wilderness time. It wasn't the wilderness of testing, like Jesus, and it wasn't the wilderness of the Israelites where we're going around in circles around the mountain zillions of times, but it was a training wilderness like what Paul had. And he had to take me into that because he had to help me understand that the truth that I understood, little t, was not the capital T truth that he needed for me to understand. I, went, I was in that time for two and a half years. Two and a half years of being in an interim church, because he moved us too. So not only did he move our location, he moved us. I went into a church that he said would be an interim church, and we were greatly blessed by it. But it was, it was a temporary uh, filling point for us. I wasn't supposed to get involved, which I always had, in, in the church community at that point. Because he had to take me into a place where he had to reset me. I had to reboot. You know, he had to take some of those structures, some of those things that had been placed in me and what I had learned about him and what it was so limiting in my view of him. And he had to take those away. And he had to show me and reveal the amazing, amazing God that he is. So my passion was able to be fanned. The flames were able to ignite. You know, what else did it do? Well, I was passionate for a community. I was passionate for connection. I was passionate for people who had the same hunger I had. And frankly, there weren't that many around me that did. You know? And, and God is, is so gracious because that's when I connected to Graham Cook and I connected to the warrior class. And I found a community of people who are so passionate about pursuing who they are in Christ, what their identity is, how we can train in the ground of intercession, how we can grow in relationship with God. There's a few warriors here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. You know, so I, I, do have, um, I do have a card back there if anyone's interested um, and hearing about it. Um, they're all the same. They're different colors. We just like to be creative. But the thing was, is I just wanted a place where I could grow. I wanted a place where I could be stretched. I wanted a place where I could be challenged, but where I could connect with people who were like-minded in their passion. I was tired of a passionless group of people. I wanted something more. There was more. I knew there was more. God was more. You know, and we have communities like Eastgate, like um, Tracy's Church. I just totally blanked out on the name, and I had it. <laughs> I had it in front of my brain. Um, but Storehouse, thank you. And, you know, and, and Lana and her connections and who she's connecting to. I mean, we, we are in a place where we are wanting to connect to passionate people. That's what draws us together. You know, it's, it's a place where we want... We want to find the direction God has for us, and we want to be purposeful in that direction. We want to be able to step day by day into whatever God puts in front of us. We may have a vision of the future. We may not. It doesn't matter. We just still got to step day by day. You got to do what matters every day to get you there. That preparation ground takes you into a place that is going to allow you to be able to be connected. I mean... Guys, we have a movement on our hands. It's a movement of passion. That's what being a woman of wonder is about. Be passionate. I want to connect with people of passion. I want to see the kingdom of earth be totally taken by the kingdom of heaven. But I, I'm not supposed to do it alone. We need the body. So embrace the process that takes you there. Embrace it. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be challenging. Yeah, trials will come. Yes, 
Internal adversity will rise up within you. You may have a little battle on your hands. Yay! <laughs> you know what was funny was last night, I, I can't remember all three of the ones that you said, but last night when, um, when she was talking about, you know, didn't like process and didn't like, I can't remember what the other, patience, and there was one other. But I was laughing because Lily turned to me and she said, you love process. I was like, I do, I do. I love process because in process is when the treasures come. In process, it's when I find out who I am. I find out my identity. I find out who God is for me in those places. I find out the strength of how I can stand. And in process, I get trained for what's coming. Because it is... It has happened time and time again where God has taken me into some sort of training and I'm like, ooh, cool, training. This is fun. Oh, I like this. This is neat. I'm learning all sorts of neat things. And the next season, boom, I've got to use it. You know, he establishes things in us so that we can step into those places in the next season. He is so intentional about our process of growth because he's so intentional about our preparation. He wants us to steward well what he has for us. And he has some amazing things for us to steward. Some amazing, amazing things. Ah, oh, I could go on for that forever. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is that, that passion does create a connection for God. Passion does crack open the door further um, to the majesty of God. And passion causes acceleration to bring your future into today. So dream with we, me for a minute. What that means is I'm going to start asking a lot of questions, okay? Are you getting a picture of wonder yet? Are you recognizing the incredible wonder passion brings into our lives? And we've talked about how David brought future of relationship with, you know, of God into his today. So what of your future does God want to bring into your today? What of your destiny does God want to accelerate and draw clo closer to your now? How does your passionate pursuit change your timeline? I mean, if our prayers and our passionate pursuit of God can accelerate our growth and the timing for what he wants to do with us, you know, what if we step into what he reveals to us? You know, what is available for us to shift from our future into our now? You know, what if we could have five years growth in one? God's positioned outside of time. He can stop it. He can accelerate it. He can pluck something from here and put it over here. He's amazing. So if passion creates acceleration in your life for the process of your own growth, what does that create? It creates a wonder-filled and wonderful woman of God. People might just wonder how we became women of wonder, but as they do, we can point them to the wonder we have in our majestic God. We can share how being a woman of wonder helped us be resolved, resilient, be refined, be revealed, be reconciled to God. So over the last 10 years or so, I've had the privilege of being able to step into times of acceleration in my own growth process. Sometimes it was because I was behind the curve of my own growth, and sometimes it was because God just wanted to take me into a place where I could be accelerated more because my passion was asking for that. So I'm a magnet. <laughs> I'm a heavenly magnet. I draw the future into today. So today I'm here to give you what I have and what I've had. I'm here to impart to you a gift of acceleration, and I'm here to share the wonder of that journey into yours. Now, acceleration brings challenges. So I'm just going to warn you ahead of time. Um, it's not always smooth. Sometimes it is. Um, there may be times you feel a little disoriented because God's moving you at a really rapid pace, and it, it takes a minute for us to adjust. You know, kind of like when something takes off really fast, you kind of rock back. 
or as you move up a mountain, you have to acclimate. That mountain thing again. Yeah. So, so it's okay. He's just deepening and stretching you. And if you feel a little disorientation, that's okay. It will work itself out. You may not have the language to describe. You may not have the words to describe what God has done in you immediately. They'll come eventually. But you may be like, God's just doing like this. It's just a bit. And I just love it. And ah. <laughs> but that's okay. It'll come. It'll come, and you'll be able to describe it. So with your permission, um, I'd like to read over you what I feel like he's releasing. If you'd like to stand up and receive it, if you can, stand up. If not, if you'd just like to receive it where you are, that's fine. Beloved daughter of mine, woman of wonder, I created you for wonder. I created you to be fearfully and wonderfully made. I created you in my own image. I am the God of wonder. At this moment, I open space for your growth. I open a place for you to be brought into the more I have for you. You are adored, beautiful, accepted, and loved. This journey with me connects you to my heart in ways you have never dreamed possible. I will open doors for you that you did not even realize were there. I will open the window, windows of heaven and pour into your life with fullness, abundance, and acceleration. You may not know what's coming. You may not have a complete understanding of where I'm taking you, but that's okay. Because I know. I know the plans I have for you. They are plans for your destiny to be fulfilled. These plans are expansive and beyond your imagination. So, beloved, let me open your imagination to connect with mine. Allow me to refine you and to help you develop the wonder for this jo journey. Accept this invitation to embrace your process of growth and stand strong in me. Resolve to move forward into the expansion and the deepening I have for you. Allow me to fan the flames of your passion to make you solid in the face of adversity, resolute in the face of challenge, and resilient to overcome anything that has or will come your way. By your act of saying yes to me and by agreeing to receive this blessing, I have already begun the process. Even now, I am releasing the floodgates of heaven on your behalf. I am opening these floodgates of promise, provision, angelic assistance, and acceleration in your life. Yes, these things will come to pass because my promises are yes and amen. When you choose to follow me, you stepped into an invitation of reconciliation that I offered. This generated a lifelong commitment of bringing your heart closer to mine. We will dream together. We will dance together. We will explore the majestic wonder of my nature. We will transverse the expanse of heaven and earth together. Beloved, my glory spreads through you. That means you get to step into my glory in ways that will rock your world, transform your life, and grant you freedom as you have never known it. I am beyond your capacity to box me in. As Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I will commit to blowing out your boxes one by one to gently lead you into the wonder of who I am. I promise to expand your capacity to carry more of me and more of you as you live each day. I will contend for the promises I have over your life. I am fighting on your behalf as captain of the host. I am passing judgment on your enemy of old to shift atmospheres around you. You will no longer be tossed to and fro like a wave upon the sand. I can tell you in no uncertain terms, double-minded is finished. Your single focus will be on me. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am your God, and I have brought you into this inheritance. The promises Abraham saw as he gazed on the stars so many years ago are yours. The intimacy with me, lost in the garden, abdicated by Israel in the wilderness, will never be lost in your life. All you need do is turn your eyes on me. In that moment, you will reestablish the connection to intimacy I have always had for you. Right now, my doors are completely open to you. My heart is full of anticipation for the journey we have ahead. 
Your door is cracked open. In this moment, I knock. I knock on your door. It's time for you to choose if you will take this invitation. If you choose yes, fling open the door wide and see how the light of my glory pours into your heart. When you open your door to me, I know, know that I am accelerating your journey. I offer you five years of growth for this next year. I release the ability for you to withstand those areas of expansion, promise, and provision. I will bring your tomorrow into your today. Your passion unlocks the door. Your passion is what will continue to open your heart to the wonder around you. I am ready to show you my wonder. I am here to reveal how my wonder will fill you until you too fully become a woman of wonder. Father, thank you, God. Thank you for being a God of wonder. Thank you that what we see in you, we can become. That beholding your wonder makes us women of wonder. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for imparting that wonder to us in ways we can't even begin to count. Thank you for bringing us to a place of hope and joy and process for our growth. Thank you for accelerating our lives to prepare us, Lord. Build our capacity to steward well all you have for us. Thank you, Jesus, just for being you, for walking with us through, the, through our development, you know, reconciled back into relationship when we make mistakes, and resolved to follow you through the storms of life. Lord, the resilience to focus on our passion and stand strong in our identity in you. Lord, thank you for refining us with your fire, your flames of passion. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us to be vulnerable to your heart because you're a place of perfect love, and there's no fear in that. Thank you most of all, God, for fanning those flames so that our passion will allow us to be ever true to you so that we can live a lifestyle of being a woman of wonder. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to know more about our community, please visit our website at eastgatetx.org.